So welcome to this solution video for the Minisync workshop. So remember you should watch, you should attempt task one before you watch this video, then look at this video and I suggest you look at the solution video for task one, then attempt task two, then look at the solution video for task two, etc. So you can make use of anything you've seen me use in the previous solution videos. So let's get going. So I will share the music screen. So in order to start the projects, you should go to open and find the MZP file, the music project file, which you might not be able to see because it does pop in a pop up thing, but I'm opening cryptorhythm.mzp. And if we do that, we'll see we've got starting points for all the models we need to build and these checkers. So these checkers will give you feedback when you're building your solution as to what's going on. So <clears throat> let us have a look. The first thing we need to do is, uh, is solve the send more money problem. And in fact, we give you the solution. So we can just run this. And if we have a look at the output, you can see that there's a solution here. We can check that there's a single solution. Go to configuration editor, turn on user defined behavior and say zero. So that says all solutions. And we run again. You can see there's exactly one solution. The first bar says this is for each solution. And then the double bar means no more solutions. All right. And um, the part that I commented out which isn't in the model there originally is just a little bit of output. You can see this backslash open parentheses S will print out the value of that variable in this string. So if we run it like this, we'll get the crypto rhythm printed out and we can check the arithmetic, which hopefully is correct. All right, so that is part 1A, fairly straightforward. Really just checking that uh, you've got everything up and running and working. All right, so let's look at part two. So this is snake.nzn. So remember we're doing the crypto rhythm <coughs> snake <coughs> plus snake. Let's try and line it up. Equals rattle. So we can do this quite analogously to the send more money example. So we're going to introduce these variables. Now we know that S, since it starts a word, starts one of the, uh, the arithmetic things, can't be a zero. So it's between one and nine. So we know N is also a digit between zero and nine, but it doesn't start a word, so it could be one. Uh, let's just copy this multiple times. Okay, the next letter we need is A. <coughs> then K, then E, they're all zero to nines. Now we haven't gotten R yet, but R starts one of the, the uh, expressions. So that can be only one to nine, A, T and L. So there's all our variables. So we can always run, okay. Um, and check type identifier already defined. Ah, I've been I defined A twice. You can see it's hidden, hidden up there. So it's good to run early. Okay, so we, we, we're getting solution, basically. And you can see it's not a correct solution, but uh, we're getting a solution. Basically, it's setting every, every variable to its smallest value. So we're missing the constraints. So we need the all different constraint. So we just take all the letters. And say so they're all different. We run and check. Oh, now we need to include. So we can include all different like we did before. So its definition is in the file all different.nzn. Another way we can do this is just <coughs> include globals.nzn. If I can spell it correctly. Which, uh, which will include all the globals. All okay, right, so if we do that, okay, so we're getting uh, a solution. It, they're all different, you can check. Yes, they're all different, uh, but we're not doing the arithmetic. Well, that's not surprising because we haven't put that constraint in yet. 
So let's put in the constraint for the arithmetic. So it's the value of the snake, right, is 10,000 times S plus 1,000 times N plus 100 times A plus 10 times K plus E. And we're going to need that again. Let's just line it up so it looks nice and neat. And then that's going to be equal to, well, we need 100,000 here times R plus 10,000 times A plus 1,000 times T plus 100 times T plus 10 times L plus P. And we'll line it up just for no good purpose, just to make it look nice. Run and check. Oh, incorrect. Snake plus snake plus rattle doesn't hold. That seems odd. Let's have a look. Where have I done something wrong? Snake. R A T T L E Snake plus Snake. Ah, here it is. Hiding in there. <laughs> a hundred times A, not a hundred plus A. Okay, and we've done it. Whew. There you go. So that's part 1B. Let's look at part 1C. All right, looking at part C, we start with the blank screen, but here, of course, send, we're going to do send plus most equals money, which is very, very similar to what we're doing with send more money. So why don't we start and just copy that over? Okay, oops, I missed the, the yes. There you go. So, yes. Most, we're missing a T and we don't need an R, right? Send plus most equals money. Send plus most, so that's an S, that's a T equals money. So there's the thing, the all different constraint is on those ones, but the big difference we have now is we're trying to, uh, we're trying to maximize the amount of money. So we add a solve item and we're trying to maximize the value of the money. So that's exactly that expression there, which is money. All right. So here, because it was so easy, I didn't do any checks in the middle. We can run and check now. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> you can see that we've got all the constraints hold, but a non optimal sol solution. So Minisync, prints out all the solutions it finds on the way to the optimal. That's because often it's very hard to find the optimal. I just want the best one we can find. So you can see that what's going on there is we're getting correct, all the constraints hold, but we haven't got the optimal solution until finally we get to the end where the optimal solution is correct. One, zero, eight, seven, six. Yep. So that's all working correctly. So they're very straightforward because we started from, we had almost all of the uh, things we needed from send more money. All right, so the last part of uh, task one is the attemptation puzzle. So this is slightly different in the fact that we are given some of the digits. Um, and so we have to, so we are able, we're actually allowed to have repeated digits in here because some of them are given. So remember we're solving the please oops, plus solve. Okay, so notice you can have longer uh, attemptation sort of puzzles where we have uh, three add-ins. Right. So we can start as usual with the variables. P and 0.9L. We're going to need a few of those, so why don't we... Yeah. 
Okay, so we need E, which is a zero to nine digit. We need A. We need S, but note because it starts solve, that's a one to nine digit. We need E, we've already got. We need U. We need Z. We need L. We need E, we've already got. We need Q. But actually, <coughs> we're given some constraints to begin with. Right? We're given that z equals seven and we're given that q equals seven so an alternate way <coughs> of writing this let's say for q instead we could just say int q equals seven because it's not really a variable if we're going to decide one so i'll leave that in one in one one way for doing it for z one day doing it for q now, of course, it's a, a all different constraint on the remaining variables. Otherwise, obviously, it couldn't hold if we required that Z and Q were the same. So all the other ones have to be different. And actually, <coughs> they're not allowed to be seven. If you sit, look at the puzzle, and what am I missing? Oh, I'm missing O. Oh. This would be O variable. Please solve. Oh, we're missing the V. We're doing very well here. <laughs> I basically skipped out the whole. Okay, please solve. Puzzle. So we need U. And we've all read Z. Okay, well, we've got two copies of L. This would be very bad. We've got two copies of E. That would also be very bad. That's never going to be different, right? So let's have a look. We've got all the letters there. Oh, Z we don't have to do. Well, Z we can put in because we know that none of the other variables can be seven. So if we put that in, then that's going to force none of the other variables to be seven. So uh, let's include all different. And check, we haven't put the big crypto rhythm in yet. <coughs> don't find L already defined. Okay, so don't need two copies of L. Okay. O equals four is not in the numbers. Ah, so there's another constraint going on here that our codex, we have to fill our numbers into our codex. So actually, possibly a different way of doing this. Why don't we build the set of integers that are in the codex. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, basically 7 we don't really have, 8 and 9. So we know that this is actually a variable in the codex. So each of these variables are variables in the codex. We'll have to come back because um, <coughs> Some of the variables can't be zero, right? So we'll do that separately. Um, and if we're doing the codex, see the codex doesn't have seven in it. So we'll just, we'll go back to the, the simple way. We'll just say int z equals seven. Right, rather than having this constraint. Now, that, let's see, that should be better. Whoops, if we've got a syntax error, I didn't put a semicolon here. Okay, so now all I'm getting is that the uh, crypto rhythm doesn't hold, which is fair enough because we haven't put it in. So let's add the crypto rhythm. So it's going to be big. L plus 1000 times E plus 100 A plus 10 S plus D. And I'm just going to find it easier, I think, if I. Okay, so for the first copy, we don't need those digits. 
It's a five letter word. So it's S O L E D. And then adding puzzle. So P U Z Z L plus E. Now, notice we could just write this as seven, seven, like six sevens in a row, but because we know that Q is seven. But I think we're better off uh, writing it in the whole cryptorhythm form just to keep uh, formatting simple. And I mean, we're not using, making use of any special. That's about the fact that we not have the Q value. All right, so let's have a try on that. Okay, so that looks like we've got everything. Okay, so there was another way of doing this. We could have said that these, rather than say the codex and setting up all the possible numbers, we could have said the digits between zero and nine. Oh, no, oh, we didn't actually add constraints. We're missing the constraints, but of course there's only one solution, but we should have the constraint that P is greater than or equal to one, and also S, the one, right? So that wouldn't make any, any difference. So we didn't need those constraints to get the one and only solution. But we could, yes, instead of saying codex, we could have said they were zero to nine and then said that none of them equals four. Or we could have just added a four actually into here. That would have been smart as well. So there's always many ways of solving these problems um, and you can find the best way for you. All right, so that brings us to the end of task one.